Okay, students, so uh, to go alongside the Frankenstein one, here is going to be a little mind map of context and key concepts for Never Let Me Go. Um, I have got a different cup for this one, and it's full of tea rather than coffee to make it different. And while the video is ongoing, I'm going to eat a cake um, because there is some and I want one. So, uh, Never Let Me Go, uh, key contexts, okay? We're going to break that down into contexts of genre. Okay, so the genre, and attached to that would be these idea of sort of the, the sort of literary contexts of the t of the of the of the novel. Okay, we're going to look at history or society. Okay, so this idea of in particular the twenty first century and, and and how that is significant in uh, the novel. Okay. We've got this idea up here, we're going to look at this um, concept of sort of colonialism and power. It's going to be a big contextual uh, issue. And then really, really important, we're going to look at some of the sort of politics and philosophy um, that is um, in, the, in the novel, that's explored in the novel. So we're going to look at um, the sort of, uh, almost sort of the ethical questions, the ethical dilemmas. Uh, posed by the text, really. Um, I think also as well, when looking at the, the sort of the history of society, um, that's significant. But we might also look at, say, um, the setting. So it's set in um, the UK, which which might be important. Okay. So uh, we're going to look at setting, genre, literary, hist uh, genre, literary influences, uh, history, so society of the 21st century, key sort of ethical and political and philosophical issues, and um, the issue of colonialism. I'm going to have my first bite of cake now. Mmm, that is a tasty cake. Right, so, let's get them. Oh, it's good, it's lemon drizzle and everything. Right, lemon drizzle cake then. It's the best cake I've decided to do a little revision video too. I'm gonna do that, a different cake every video, how about that? Good for you, good for me. So, um, let's start with the um, 21st century, let's start with the easy stuff. So, of course, it's, um, uh, the 21st century is when the text is, is written. It's an extremely modern novel. And so um, some of the um, issues that are coming through there, of course, is the fact that we have human cloning. Don't bang on about Dolly the Sheep all the time. But, of course, cloning is a technology that is being developed in the, um, in the 20th and 21st centuries. We're all going to have to deal with it. And attached to that are the sort of stem cell research and all the sort of medical, medical ethics that sort of comes along with those those questions, um, these issues of um, cloning and stem cell research. And of course, given that it's a sort of 21st century society, we're looking at this idea of um, uh, sort of social determinism in a way. That's going to be also be a sort of philosophical idea as well, that the text in some way determ is about um, this idea that your sort of pathway in life is determined socially and that sort of an equal society is a big concern. Um, in the 21st century because we, we expected society would become more equal in the 20th and in fact in the 21st if anything it became it's, it's and becoming uh, more and more sort of uh, stratified and diverse and unequal in that way okay so history and society the 21st century is, is, is significant now I think this is a really area for, for development here which is something that we, we really need to, to look into so elements of sort of realism or what we might call elements of sort of naturalism as well. They're not, not quite the same thing, really. So um, elements of, of, of realism in the, um, in the text would be the way in which it paints a sort of realistic psychology, perhaps, or a realistic setting. So you know, this idea of, of a, a, a non-hyperbolic setting, um, sort of this idea of sort of realistic settings and characters in there. Naturalism, the world as it is, the world sort of... Um, as it is now, if you think it of the uh, as it is, if you think of the sort of style of writing in the text, it's very, very rarely does it go over the top or aim for dramatic impact. If, in many ways, it's almost like a, a, a bit of a soap opera. It's about relationships, kind of small focus of the of the text there on a particular place. It doesn't embellish. It doesn't go over the top, really. Okay, um, a key part of that sort of realism might be the sort of narrative perspective. Can you see this okay? Yeah, no, nah, I've forgotten how to spell. Narrative perspective. 
is, a, is an issue, of course, so mainly from sort of Kathy's point of view, this first person and developing of a realistic psychology, but also we have sort of a different narrative perspectives as well. Uh, onto, from my opinion, sort of slightly more interesting things would be the, the sort of sci-fi elements of the text. So it doesn't seem like a sci-fi text in many ways, but um, in fact there's some really, really important elements of the dystopian sort of uh, fiction in there. Dystopian fiction being sort of painting a um, a world of the future which is dysfunctional in some sort of way. It's about you know crafting a new setting really. That would link us to setting in a moment. And, and the other elements of sci-fi would be um, the idea of sort of imagined futures and imagined different worlds and taking a scientific technology and running with it. So the focus on a specific technology or need and, and exploring the ethical implications of that very, very similarly to, to Frankenstein, whereas the dystopian elements, we don't really see that in Frankenstein at all. Um, other elements of the sci-fi, I think this, you, could, you could definitely say there's elements of the gothic in there. So terror, certainly, the, the sense of, of suspense but I actually always think there's a sort of a slow build of horror in the text too. So um, particularly the, the realisation of the inevitability of, of, of death and the sort of fundamental nihilistic horror of existence, I think is, is something really quite a slow burn in the text, can be quite disturbing. So there's sort of some sort of terrifying and horrific elements in there that might be uh, significant as well. That moves us on to the setting, the sort of dystopian setting. <laughs> the idea that the UK in the 1990s was dystopian, well, I lived through it. So uh, it's an alternative UK, isn't it? Um, it's an alternative UK setting, so um, in the 1990s, and it's very, very bland and mundane. The only real difference between uh, the 1990s of this sci-fi dystopian sort of uh, imagined alternative uh, parallel world uh, and, and ours uh, is, is the one technology of, of cloning. Everything else seems very, very mundane. So elements of the sort of the, the, um, the boarding school, um, or just school in general, those elements are, are, are sort of genre features, um, uh, of sort of almost like the campus novel or the school novel, the young adult novel, um, where we see you know this sort of quite bland, mundane, institutional sort of setting that's going on here, and, and why that's significant, adding to this sort of slow burn of the horror of the text. Okay, um, I mean it's Woolworths. It's got to be Woolworths, doesn't it? You know when they finally get out into the real world and uh, expect one thing and what they get is Woolworths, you know, they, all respect to Woolworths and, you know, if they were still around they could sue me, but um, it's, it's, you know, it really does speak to quite a bland, uh, mundane, um, a very, very British sort of setting, um, not really particularly in any one thing, um, you know, sort of quite middle of the road really. Okay, um, some other issues then that within now that we go, that in terms of the context, um, the, the political philosophy and the ethical questions are really important, and, and so I need to have a bit of cake to get ready to, to talk about them. Um, so, politics, philosophy, ethical questions, it all stems from this issue of the cloning, doesn't it? It, it sort of brings to the fore these um, ethical, ethical dilemmas. So you can do this really, really simply. You can go, should we have clones that we use, but we can get into a little bit more sort of detail with the way in which we talk about things. So um, there's a sort of conflict, as there in Frankenstein actually, between consequentialist, consequentialist views of morality and, if we just move the cake, which is now left sugar on my paper, never mind, and the, determ and the um, deontological, um, or the question of sort of easier to it is human, human rights this question so um, and, and our duties towards each other so um, some people think that all that really matters is consequences you know so um, they might use people as a means to an end in, uh, if, if it's for the greater good which is of course the entire justification for um, this sort of essentially institutional murder of the clones uh, for the greater good um, a consequentialist might think of that, but um, it, there's also the question of rights, isn't there? Do the clones have rights? These are what we call deontological questions, questions of, of, of duties and responsibilities and stemming from our nature. And So a big question would be then, you know, are clones persons with rights? Um, there's actually a, an ongoing question now in the, in the 21st century about um, animal rights, of course. Um, but a big one would be these, um, chimpanzees, who are extremely close to us genetically, and they display many of the features of sentience and 
many of the social features. And indeed, uh, um, uh, up until the age of um, 18 months, I think a, a, a chimpanzee is, is actually um, more intelligent with a wide range of intelligence than a human is. So um, the question of whether um, uh, animals should have rights is, is sort of dealt with here as well. The question of whether the clones should have rights, are they just commodities? And that's another sort of question of 21st century existence, isn't it? Commodification. Um, to mod, uh, I can't spell that. K F K S H N. There we go. Commodification. So, or, or just generally the sense of uh, consumerism. So literally, the clones' bodies are sort of consumed. I mean, they're even part of the system themselves, aren't they? They become uh, do, uh, sort of uh, um, what they call carers before they become donors, and so they're all implicated in the system, and that's very much like being, um, even trying to be a good um, you know, uh, democratic socialist in the 21st century, you inevitably still have a credit card, you're still part of the system. Okay, so... Um, on to some of the other um, important political issues then. Um, these, we've got the issues of rights, we've got the issues of um, uh, the, the philosophical questions. I think another idea that um, we might come at idea is a, a sort of philosophical idea or psychological idea is the idea of the uncanny. So, or what Freud calls um, das Unheimlich, um, which is like um, the idea of something being uh, like a double or a twin or something that's sort of slightly disturbing that sort of usually involves, say, uh, doubling or, or something along those lines. So that sort of, it, it's an assault on the ego. It makes us question our own identity, things along those lines. And the, clo the clones create an uncanny effect in everybody else in the text, don't they? They sort of, um, they're, they're unquieting, they're, they're sort of disquieting, they're unsettling. Uh, they're not sort of outright horror. They're a much more sort of uncanny effect. And then finally, I think in terms of the context, there's this issue of, of colonialism. So um, we're used to in the 20th century, 19th and 20th centuries, colonialism of the, um, uh, of, of the world, of geography, but colon colonizing the body. Um, um, so colonizing the body is a big part of this too. So um, trying to colonize the body, um, trying to uh, take ownership of it, um, and, and the idea of the, the state power is a big question, the power of the state almost a sort of empire. There's a, a links to the, the dystopian element here. I know it doesn't seem it because we don't see um, the actual structures that keep the, the, um, uh, the clones um, um, sort of under power. But this is, a, this is an, a, an imperial dominance over the entire lives of these people. They are slaves and they're going to be murdered. So um, the idea of the sort of uh, colonization of the body, um, a sort of 21st century form of colonialism, is 21st century methods of power, where it's not just that you serve a state or your, you know, your lands are taken, your very life, your body is taken from you as well. Okay, um, oh, just uh, some quick literary elements as well. You might want to sort of um, look at Plato's Republic as a literary influence too. Um, so uh, the idea of um, um, the guardians, the idea of a, a society that's run um, for um, sort of the, the greater good, for, the, for justice, um, and a sort of where everybody knows their place uh, might be seen to be an influence on the, on the text. Okay, well, I think that's it, isn't it?